Maybe you're a casual user of ChatGPT, Bard, Poe, Claude, Dali, Midjourney, or any of the tools like that. Or maybe your organization has a high end artificial intelligence generative AI tool that's available to you. Either way, the quality of the answers that you get from an AI tool is highly dependent on the quality of the questions that you ask and the way that you ask those questions. So let's take a simple look at prompt engineering, how to craft an effective prompt for a generative AI tool. Prompt engineering is the use of carefully crafted inquiries that aim to get an effective response out of a generative AI system. Or in simple terms, it's about telling your AI what you want as effectively as possible. Prompt engineering is becoming a highly sought after skill for generating everything from text to images to 3D models, to computer code, to scripts, to robot instructions and automation bots. It is the perfect 2020s combination of coding and logic with art and intuition. Professional prompt engineering requires a deep understanding of generative AI systems and the rules they work to. Prompt engineers need to become precise in their use of language and adept at selecting the appropriate modifiers which act as specific instructions to the generative AI system. AI prompts typically consist of some or all of five components. One, a statement of the context. Two, a description of the task or the output required. Three, a specification of the output format. Four, details of any constraints. And five, a set of modifiers that act to further constrain or instruct the AI in how to produce its output. Good AI prompts need to be specific, grounded in a context, clear and precise, and provisional. The odd one there, I suspect, is provisional. What do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is that every prompt is part of a learning process. Never consider that one prompt is certainly going to give you the result that you want, because at the moment we don't have the knowledge and the skills and the experience to get precise results from our generative AI prompts. So take each prompt as part of a learning process. And then when you see and understand the output you get, use that and your understanding of the prompt that you made to craft a new prompt to get a better result. There's a large part of experimentation and test and review in prompt engineering. So to get what you want, you sometimes need to iterate to adapt from what you've learned and try again. So the question for project managers is, what can we use these generative AI prompts for? Well, the list is long and growing. As I prepared my notes, I was easily able to list the following. Asking your AI tool to extract information or a summary from a chunk of text or a whole article or even a whole book. And you can specify things like word count, style and formatting. AI can answer direct questions, although at the moment we do need to beware of things like biases or hallucinations. That is the AI making up an answer that seems plausible. We can ask our AI to make creative suggestions for things like risks or project names. AI can draft messages in a specific style. 
For example, you could ask your AI tool to draft you a 200 word email to apologize for the late delivery of a project deliverable and to do it in a highly courteous way that is appropriate for a senior stakeholder. You might not get exactly the memo that you want, but it will be a good starting place. Then you can feed that memo back to the AI and ask it to revise it, telling it the changes you'd like it to make or what you weren't happy with. You can ask your AI to analyze the style of a piece of writing. It can tell you about the style, but perhaps more valuably, you can then give it another piece of writing and ask it to redraft it in the style of the article it just analyzed. And increasingly, you can ask generative AI tools to write computer code and scripts. Yes, of course, you will need to run it past a skilled software engineer before you put it live and you will need to conduct tests. But even when the tests fail, you can feed that information to the AI and ask it to correct its own code. I predict that before very long, AI will be writing whole software tools. However, the title of this video is how to write good AI prompts. So I want to end with my seven favorite tips, tips that I use when I write AI prompts myself. First, talk to your AI in the same way as you would talk to a human being. AI tools have been trained on human language, so they're good at recognizing it and understanding it. Ask it what you would ask a colleague in the same way as you would ask that colleague. I like to use the words please and thank you because I know that machines have perfect memory and when they take over the world, they will remember which of us were rude to them and which of us were polite. My second tip is that the more details that you give to the AI tool, the better its answer is likely to be. For example, if you want your AI tool to suggest risks to your project, then tell it all about the project. The more information you give it, the more precise you are, then the more likely that the risks it comes up with are going to be appropriate. Now, yes, I know if you are using a public tool, then there is a limit on how much information you're going to want to put into the public domain feeding into the tool. But if you can anonymize the information or if you're using an enterprise tier tool, which is in some way contained, then put in all the information you possibly can. One way to do this is to set out a simple table of information for the AI. List first the category, then a colon or a divider of some form, and then the specification. For example, project name, colon, and then give the project name. Number of resources, colon. Deadline, colon. Objective of project, colon. List of deliverables, colon. The more information you give it, the better it will be. To expand on that, my third tip is to give the AI some examples of the kinds of answers you might expect to see. This way it will gain an understanding of how to respond in a way that will meet your needs. This is particularly useful if you don't get the kind of answers you want. You can then continue the conversation by saying, those aren't quite what I wanted. Here is the sort of answer I was expecting. Please give me more answers based on this example. And as before, if you give it two examples or three examples, you might expect to get better responses than with just a single example. Giving examples is particularly valuable if you find it hard to explain what you want the AI to do. My fourth tip is to make good use of what you might call improvement prompting. This is where you feed the AI some work that you have done to tell it what it is you don't like about what you've done and ask it to make it better. And as always, be specific. Tell it in what way you want it to improve your work. Better grammar, a different style, 
more content. Some illustrative examples. My fifth tip is to also make use of what you might call chain of thought prompting or COT prompting. This is where you avoid writing a big long prompt that explains the whole problem that you want the AI to respond to. Rather, you give it the first part of the prompt and then inform it that your next contribution will give it another component. So, for example, you might say, I'm going to give you a problem, but first I'm going to give you the context. The context is, and then you set out the context. Then at the end of that, next, I will tell you what I want. And then in your next prompt, you say, here is what I want. You then describe it. And then at the end of that, you say, in my final prompt, I will tell you the format I want you to give me the answer in. You then give a final prompt which says the format I would like you to use is. Now, please give me your response. As you can see, this is talking to the AI as you would talk to a person. When you've got a complicated message to deliver, you break it into parts and you pause between those parts. Do that with your AI. And of course, generative AI has a huge benefit over many of your colleagues in that it is infinitely patient. If you ask it to wait for the next part of your prompt, it will do so. And it won't lose patience and wrap its fingers on the table and say, come on, where's the next bit? My sixth tip is perhaps the most meta tip of all, which is that you can ask the AI to generate a better prompt. You can say something like, here's the prompt I would like to give you, but before you respond to it, please suggest a better prompt which might give me a better result. And my final tip is to keep a note of the prompts that you use, especially the ones that give you good results. Copy the effective prompts into a document so that you can copy and paste them back into your AI tool and then adapt them. That way you don't have to rethink every time how to prompt your computer. Without a doubt, writing effective prompts for generative AI will become the kind of skill that everybody needs to have at their disposal every day at work. If you're like me, you will remember a time when you had to kind of figure out how to use search engines, but now we do it all the time without thinking. Prompt engineering is a bit more complicated and there is more to learn than simple Google searches but I hope it will become second nature to do it well in the near future. Please do give this video a like if you've enjoyed it or learned from it. I'll be making loads more great project management videos for you, so please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the bell to be reminded of every video I create. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.